Hi, I hope you're having a wonderful day today. Today's video, I'm going to be sharing things that I was influenced to buy, and I'm going to let you know if I love them or hate them. I have been seeing a lot of these videos going around. Um, you know what? I've seen a lot of these videos going around and it should be a tag. So I'm going to turn this into a tag. I just decided to do this right now. Um, I've enjoyed watching them. Um, as somebody who does YouTube and has done YouTube for seven years, I am not very easily influenced. And <laughs> I had a really, really bad purchase not too long ago. And I'm like, you know better. You absolutely know better. Before we get into that, if you're new to my channel, my name is Melinda. If you're returning, thank you so much for coming back. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you would just take one moment and hit that subscribe button down below. I have a goal. I have been here for seven years and I have a goal of hitting 30,000 subscribers by the end of the year. I am at 29. I think 2956. <laughs> so close. I would just love to hit that number. So let's get into this. If I remember the person's name, I will share it except for in the case of the one that is extremely, extremely negative because I don't want to put that person's name out there. Um, so when I and looking at links and, and thinking of buying something that somebody on YouTube shows me, there's a few little things that go through my mind first. Um, number one, is it their full-time job? Is this how they are, you know, paying for everything in their lives? Um, if it is, I take it really with a grain of salt. I call YouTube my job. I always, people ask on a Q&A, what is your job? This is it. I say that in the loosest terminology possible. If I left this platform tomorrow, my life is not going to change. My lifestyle is not going to change. However, if I had millions of followers and my husband had quit his job, things would change greatly. So I do look at that. I also look at people who link all the time versus people that link once in a while. I usually link clothes about twice a year. Um, I will not be linking this sweater. I bought it earlier in the fall. It is gone. Um, you know, I, I, I don't do a lot of links. Um, let's talk about payment. <laughs> I have 29,000 followers. Let's just use Amazon for an example. The most money I have ever made in one month on Amazon. Sit down. You're, you're gonna just you're gonna want to start doing a YouTube channel. <laughs> Twenty-one dollars. I kid you not. I don't link a lot of Amazon. I don't link a lot of anything. I always have my Amazon storefront down below, but I usually get nothing. Nothing. Um, very few months do I get a payment from Amazon. And usually it's, if I do, it's $10 and like I said, the most 21. So I do think about that because this is that person's income. I do not mind clicking on YouTubers links. I know it takes a lot, a lot of work to do all of that and to share everything. And I don't mind supporting them. I don't mind sponsored videos. Um, if I feel like they believe in the product, the last two years I've been on on YouTube I have worked with one company and that that is it I get emails daily as you can imagine and I actually have sent product back twice when it came I was like no way I am NOT sharing this with my audience I have to love it to show you so I keep all these things in mind and even then I have bought a few bad things. The first thing I'm going to show you is actually a good thing, but it came from a bad thing. And I don't watch her channel very often, but it was from Shay Whitney. And why was I watching her channel? I think it was like an Amazon Prime beauty or something and I was just curious and she recommended the set of makeup brushes and she's like they're every bit as good as the Tarte brush that I use every day and she raves about this Tarte brush. Well I bought that set and it was not a horrible purchase but 
I don't, you know, it could be the viscosity of my foundation. It could have been many things. I gave it to my daughter. My daughter enjoyed it, but it was an epic fail for me. But I was like, she raves about this all the time. So I bought it. I love this thing. I see why she raves about this all the time. This, I, I barely even use my beauty blender anymore. This thing is just, it is magical for foundation. I absolutely love this one. Um, oh, I forgot to bring something in here that I was heavily influenced. Let me go grab it. <laughs> okay, the second one that I was heavily influenced to buy by many, many influencers. I would say the biggest one would probably be Mel in Melbourne. That is my Hermes Rodeos. Um, most people call them Rodeos. It is not like the street in Beverly Hills. I have had the manager at Hermes tell me it is Rodeo. They are a horse company. You can call it whatever you want. These are cute. They are very cute, but <laughs> I don't, they've never left my house. They're not my style. I just can't see hanging a horse on my bag and going out. And that doesn't mean if you do it that, that I, you know, look at you if I see somebody out, oh, you got a horse on your bag, you're weird. I don't, I don't, I don't think of anybody that way. You can do whatever you want. But for me, these were expensive and silly. To me, they were just, they're just silly. <laughs> they're cute, they're silly. Um, I, whenever I show these, people are like, I'll buy it from you. They're not for sale. They have such, such memories attached to this. We flew to get my Birkin in July of 2020. I was terrified to get on that plane. That was when the middle seats were empty. I paid extra to get on first and held the seat for my husband. I'm in row three. There's no one behind me and some woman's like, can I have your window seat? And I'm like, no, my husband's sitting there. And she's like, I don't see him. <laughs> I kid you not. I was like, he's in the bathroom. She glared at me. I could tell she was glaring at me with her mask on, but you know, they're hard to get offered. And my sales associate was so sweet and let me take both of them. But I think they're silly for me. They're silly. Um, the next thing I was really heavily influenced and most, this is the, I only have two things. I have this and the really horrible thing which is going in the garbage after this video. Uh, but most of them I have sold. The Chanel mini flap. Um, who didn't influence me? But I think the biggest one would be Minx for All mini. I love her channel. I love Mel's channel. I think it's cute that she decorates a Christmas tree with her. She likes to say Rodeo, so I'll say that for Mel. I, I, I love her channel. I love Minnie's channel. Um, and she didn't you know, neither one of them made a penny for me buying these, you know, it was just that I was just so influenced. Many would just say the most wonderful things about her. Um, I feel like my bracelet just came off and is lost in my sweater. And it is. <laughs> my bracelet just fell off. Um, but she just raved about them. And so did so many other influencers, Karis, um, LV Lover CC, so many. I thought I had to have a Chanel rectangular mini flap hated that bag. <laughs> just hated it. It was too small. It was just, I don't have, if I can find my own pictures, I will pop it in um, or else I will just pop in a picture. Mine was black lambskin with silver hardware. I knew I didn't like Chanel lambskin going in to purchase it. I don't know, but I was just like, I have to have it. And on that same theme, I thought I had to have a Chanel reissue. I never found that bag attractive. And uh, don't be offended if you love any of these things because you probably, there's something I, I own that you think is ugly, I promise you. <laughs> and you can probably name it right now. Um, I never thought the bag was attractive, but it grew on me, it grew on me, it grew on me. I took that bag on a trip. I don't remember how many days I was gone. Oh, those chains dug into my shoulder so bad. They were so, so painful. I sold that, have never looked back. Um, one of the dumbest things that I was influenced by, and this would be from Instagram to YouTubers, what's in my bag, people, was the Chanel egg-shaped hand cream. Oh my goodness, that was, it was, <laughs> I don't, I don't feel like it was a good formulation. 
I did not bring in my L'Occitane hand cream. I was gonna show it to you. I'll put a picture of it in. Um, it did not help my, my dry hands. It didn't help my cuticles. It did nothing for me. It was very, very expensive. I wanna say it was like $50 or something for this little egg. Stupid, 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 my fault. I bought it, but um, I currently use this L'Occitane one, which I will insert a picture of. And I am telling you, this stuff is a wonder, miracle, miracle, miracle lotion. If you get dry elbows, if you just make sure to put that on like two, three times a day, gone. The cuticles, gone. You don't have the hangnails, nothing. It's amazing. And it's a fraction of the price and it works. And I know people love that Chanel hand cream, but no, I thought it was horrible, horrible, horrible. I do have one of my horrible purchases with me, actually. The Gucci powder. I have a couple of Gucci lipsticks that I love. I am very hesitant to ever try any of their powdered products again. It's gorgeous. Is that not a beautiful compact? It's pretty. And this is Gucci on it right there. This opens up. It's pink. If I can open it up. <laughs> it's pink. It's got the little powder puff. Oh, I just thought I was going to love this. This powder is just, it's, it's not a good formulation on my skin. I feel like it's hard to get out. I feel like it's a very hard powder and it doesn't come off very easily in the powder puff. It is pretty. And that was part of what I said in one of my videos about not buying things for the packaging unless, you know, it's really going to work for me. But I ordered it online, so I had no idea. Okay, the last of the bad. I think this is the last of the bad. Yes, it's on the floor because it smells so bad. I am gonna put in a mod shot. I tried these on earlier today. I had a different um, sweater on. I literally started gagging. And this is the YouTuber's name I'm not gonna mention. I understand that fashion YouTubers, that that's all they do. They're doing Walmart haul after Walmart haul or whatever it may be. There's no way, and there's some that I really, really like, there is no way that they like every single piece that they're showing you when they're showing you 20 to 30 clothing items and then they have a new video up in three days and a new video up in three days. The few times a year that I share clothing with you, it is clothing I have bought, the tags are off, and I am keeping. I understand they can't possibly keep all of that, but I also believe, because the same company reached out to work with me, and um, I didn't know very much about them, and I had already ordered this, like it was like a Black Friday sale, and my daughter, I have one daughter that's really into TikTok, and then me and my other daughter, we don't go on there at all. And she's like, Mom, that brand is all, it's crap, it's all over TikTok. And I'm gonna grab them because they're on the floor. It's, oh, they smell so bad, oh my gosh. It's from Halara, and the influencer, I just, <clears throat> I'm not gonna mention her name, but I did unsubscribe because I strongly feel like she knew these were junk. It is a crossover waist jean, and it's a pull-on jean. It has pockets in the back. Why I bought it with these giant flares at the end, <laughs> I don't know. I was like, it looked cute on her. It smells so, so strong of chemicals. Literally, I, what, see how I'm holding it away from my face. I was absolutely gagging when I did. I did the mod shot in my bathroom because this bed is full of stuff for a couple of videos that I have planned. So I thought, oh my, oh my gosh. Oh, it smells so bad, oh my gosh. So, <laughs> I'm like, I don't know if I noticed it smelled bad, when I got it, but um, I knew I didn't like him, but I had to pay a fee to send him back, and I was like, oh, you know, I'll make it work, I'll make it work. I washed them not too long ago by themselves because they are a very dark denim, and then I popped them in the dryer. When I opened the dryer, I was like, oh, poop. <laughs> the whole dryer drum was dark blue. And I have learned this because my husband did this 
and um, he, we, we did not know. He had bought some jeans and we did not know that it, and it, it dyed everything because it, oh, it ruined. I had the most beautiful sweatshirt that my daughter had designed for me with Lola's picture, an actual picture of Lola on it and it dyed it, it ruined all sorts of things. So I was like, okay, what do I have to do to get this? Because I can't put anything else into the dryer. I was on my hands and knees with a bucket of vinegar and dishwashing soap and rags for over half an hour scrubbing out my dryer to get that blue off. And then to top it all off, they still smell like the most disgusting chemical smell. I, I saw I threw this. I hate to do this because I believe in recycling, but those are going in the trash. That is just, they were that bad. That absolutely bad. Now I have to grab one thing that's on the bed. The rest of these are very positive things. Okay, so the next one is uh, the Burberry Willa Check cardigan. I will find a picture of me and insert it. This was heavily influenced to me by Lux Mommy Amanda. And she has this one. And she has this exact one, this exact color. This one's really, really hard to find. I bought this and I have been thrilled with this. I love the fit. I love everything about it. If you follow me, you know I do not do a lot of designer brand clothes. This is one of the pieces I felt was worth it. I felt it was so worth it. I also purchased it in a gray color and just couldn't say better things about this. It's just fabulous, fabulous, fabulous cardigan. Let me set this back on the bed. Okay, handbags. The Loop Hobo GM. Who wasn't I influenced <laughs> to buy this by? I think Karis from LV Lover CC is the one that finally tipped it, but there was so many unboxings, so many people had this. I think it's a fabulous, fabulous bag and very, very happy with this. I am so good about returning things that I'm, if I have any hesitation, things go back now. So, which helps a whole lot. I also know my style a lot better than I did. Okay, there's no way I can reach that from here. Um, but I also know my style a lot better than I did seven years ago. The other one is over here, and that is the Louis Vuitton Speedy. Oh goodness. <laughs> I have it all, all a mess here. The Speedy 20, and again, pretty much influenced by, who knows, so many people unboxed this. I can't name a specific channel. Um, I was watching this bag before it came out with the adjustable strap. I'm Correct me if I'm wrong. When it first came out, it had a guitar strap, but not adjustable. Is that right? And when it came out with the adjustable one, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna go for it. I have reviews on both of these bags. So if you want to check those out, I will link those down below. I'm not gonna try to get that back on the hook either. So now let's get into some good beauty products that I have been influenced to buy. Of course, the Tarte brush, I love this. I absolutely love this. And I'm trying to remember all the people that I watched that um, influenced me. Two of them that I remember in particular are um, Dr. Dre. She is a dermatologist, love her channel, and I'm not sure what all who has influenced. And the other one is Marlena Snell. I think it's Snell, it might be Stell. I always say her name wrong, but um, she influenced me, not specifically with this item, but she got me to look at drugstore brands. And so get into that in just a moment. Um, she did influence me to get these. These are so cheap. Whenever she does her makeup, she uses these little triangle sponges they have a little thing where you can put your fingers in it. These are awesome. You can get, you know, under the corners of your eyes so that if you use um, any kind of concealer, it's set. And these are very, very inexpensive. They're from Amazon. If you just Google triangle, um, triangle, <laughs> um, 
powder puffs. It just comes right up. These were great. The other thing that she indirectly influenced me to get, I don't believe she's ever talked about this on her channel, but she was just talking about how a lot of makeup is made in the same places. Um, she influenced me to buy some eyeliner. I've always bought Sephora brand, but I bought a few other eyeliners that I like. But I have talked about these before, and this is the, the NYX Butter Gloss. And here's just two of the colors. I think I have six of them. Here's three more. <laughs> they are either six dollars. I don't know what they are. This is what I have on today. This is, I have been using this over all of my expensive makeup. It does not have, I'll show you this, it does not have beautiful packaging. It does not have, you know, any bells or any whistles to it at all but it's not sticky. It's one of the only glosses that I wear that I am not sitting here. Sometimes you'll see me do this <laughs> and it's because there is, it's in my, um, my hair and my lip gloss. I did that earlier because that's because my hair looked weird in the monitor. I absolutely love this stuff and I realized you don't have to have everything high end in your makeup love this and it's hard to say who influenced me with this but I now double cleanse and I have a giant jar of this by my sink but it's it's icky so I brought out my travel sizes to share with you this is the Elemis Pro Cleansing Collagen Balm and this is the regular scent here and it's not a bad scent this is the big one that I have next to my sink and this is the one I prefer but it's always sold out and it's in rows and um, this smells so good oh it smells good it's a thick thick balm and I put it on dry skin and I massage it in really really good and then I take um, if you remember the video um, well, it was my entire handbag collection video. I showed you some little Gerber washcloths um, that I was dusting my bags with because they're really a gentle um, fiber versus like my washcloths. So that's how I take my makeup off. And then after that, I use First Aid Beauty cleanser. But I love this, this balm. It's a fabulous, fabulous balm. Um, these would be from Dr. Dre. And the first one is Pan Oxal. I have one in my shower, but the tube is all squished. So I'm showing you that, see, I like it. I have backups. This is awesome. It has 10% benzoyl peroxide, and it is in a cream formula maximum strength without a prescription treats acne on face and body what she recommended this for I was like huh and I tried it and it's fabulous she recommends that you wash your armpits with it because it cuts down on bacteria and it's supposed to help with not having odor and I can tell you it really works and when I'm really oily, I'll use it on my face. Not daily, because it's a little bit harsh for my super sensitive skin. This stuff is amazing. It's absolutely amazing. If you have not checked out Dr. Dre's channel, I highly suggest that you do. She's awesome. And she also introduced me to two serums that I have been using. The first one is from The Ordinary, and it's hyaluronic um, acid, um, 2% with B5. This is inexpensive, it works, it provides that extra moisture, it's amazing, I love this. This one is a miracle cream, no it's not a cream, serum, <laughs> and I don't know if I will say it right, Ni niacinamide, and it is 20% and zinc 1%. This in the summertime, I put this on after I wash my face in the morning and after I wash my face in the evening. And it really helps prevent breakouts, it helps prevent that oily skin, and it also, I put it on the back of my hands, it also is supposed to help lighten any kind of hyperpigmentation that you might get from acne or sunspots or any of that. In the wintertime, it's a little bit too harsh to use twice a day. I do it every other day. Amazing, amazing, amazing product. The next ones also from her are sunscreens. And this is the one, this is the one I've, been, I've used for years. And I still use it. I have 
several of these that are unopened. And this is the La Roche-Posay Clear Skin Dry Touch Sunscreen. And it's really, really good. I'll show you how it comes in a tube. It's a very, very good formulation. But I actually like this other one better and it is a lot cheaper. And it is the Cetaphil. And this one is SPF 60. This is SPF 50. And it's also a daily facial moisturizer. So this one has a pump on it. Uh, I usually do two pumps. I can get my face, my ears, my neck, and then I pump again for the back of my hands. And a little recommendation, don't buy it from Amazon. <laughs> I did that. You're supposed to get a two pack and one came. And so I wrote Amazon and told them and I ordered it again and again one came and then I had to get somebody on the phone and so they just refunded me for one of the orders because I ended up with two of them. But this is great. It's a lightweight moisturizer. It does not break me out. I absolutely love it. So, oh, oh, the last thing. This one is, I don't remember who I saw this with. It is Butter London Melt Away Cuticle Exfoliator. This is awesome, especially if you do your own nails. You have seen me in many a video saying, okay, don't look at my cuticles. I know, I don't know how well this is gonna show up there, but it does such a good job. Such, such, such a good job. Oh, focus. There we go. Focus, focus. Yes. It just, so you paint it on your cuticles. And if you go on Target, I will link this one so you can go find it on Target. There are so many reviews with pictures and telling you how to do it. So you paint it on your cuticles. You leave it on for about two minutes. You take an orange stick and just gently remove that extra, you know, the dead skin there that are around your cuticles. And it also helps with not getting the hangnails. So that was an awesome, awesome one. Overall, I have been influenced pretty well. And the things that were bad were mostly, mostly my fault, <laughs> you know, not doing enough research and not, you know, I don't, we do have a Chanel here, but they hardly ever had anything in stock back then. It would be impossible to try a mini on. They were just as popular back then as they are now. And sometimes you just have to own a bag and wear it and, you know, kind of figure it out from there. And sometimes you just have to buy some crappy lotion that's expensive to prove to yourself you don't need expensive lotion. <laughs> I don't know, that's just me. So I am gonna tag some ladies down below because I would love to hear what you've been influenced to purchase and the good, the bad, the ugly, do you love it and do you hate it? I hope you have an amazing day today and I hope to talk to you again very soon. Take care, bye-bye.